Professor Tribe, I want to ask you about something from the dissent, uh, in which uh, the, the dissenters write, far from presenting a straightforward biographical question, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment proscribes insurrectionist U.S. officers from again, against, uh, from again holding office. Unlike qualifications such as age and place of birth, an application of Section 3 requires courts to define complex terms, determine legislative intent from over 150 years ago, and make fact findings foreign to our election code. Now, some people who are not as learned as the two of you are, are using this argument to say it has not been determined in, legal, uh, in a legal environment whether or not Donald Trump uh, incited an insurrection or, as the, as, the, as the Constitution calls it in this case, a, a rebellion uh, against, the, against the Constitution. And that is what is making it political. You make the point that this is not only not a political or an anti-democratic uh, decision, it, it underpins democracy to, to have come down with this ruling. It certainly does. The fact that this ruling prevents disqualified people from running for office is nothing new. There are all kinds of popular people. Uh, Barack Obama might be a popular candidate. In some parts of the country, George W. Bush might be a popular candidate, but they're disqualified because of the number of times they've already run for president. Now, the quotation that you read makes the quite reasonable point that it's a lot easier to count to two. Right. How many times has someone been president? Or to count to 30, how old is someone? Than it is to figure out whether someone engaged in an insurrection or gave aid and comfort to an insurrection against the Constitution. But courts make hard decisions all the time. And it's not as though there hasn't been a detailed trial. There was a week-long trial with witnesses to the facts involved with thousands of exhibits, with expert witnesses, with fact witnesses. And at the end of that trial, the district court, the trial judge in Colorado, made a series of determinations, nearly 300 factual and legal findings that added up to something that most people think is pretty obvious. Although she didn't take it as obvious, she carefully weighed the evidence and concluded by clear and convincing evidence that Donald Trump had engaged in and given aid and comfort to an attempt to overthrow the Constitution's central provision for the transition of power from one president to the next. On the basis of all of those findings, there's no doubt that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment says this is not a person we can trust ever to hold office again. Now, all of what Judge Ludig carefully spelled out, which a lot of the audience might have thought, well, isn't that obvious? What he spelled out about how the president is indeed an officer under the Constitution wasn't obvious to Donald Trump. He made the argument that, well, maybe I fomented an insurrection, but I'm immune. I'm not subject to these rules. I'm not disqualified because the presidency is exempt from this disqualification provision. The district court, despite how bizarre and unfounded that argument turns out to be, decided to accept that argument. She said, yes, there was an insurrection. Yes, the president engaged in it. But the president is not the kind of officer that can be disqualified. That decision was one that no one on the Colorado Supreme Court thought could be sustained. The Colorado Supreme Court actually decided to accept the factual findings Yes, there was an insurrection. Yes, the president engaged in it. So why wasn't it unanimous? Well, it turns out that of the three justices who dissented, two of them rely entirely on a strange reading of Colorado law that the court rejected by a vote of five to two. So that goes out the window. One of them said that 
people have a right to public office. And you can't take that right away except by convicting them of a crime or by uh, the kind of thing that would impose massive liability. That's not what the Constitution says. It doesn't treat disqualification as some kind of penalty or punishment uh -huh. that requires a jury trial, requires proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It treats it as a kind of entry requirement, and it says that if you don't meet that entry requirement, then here there was clear and convincing evidence that Donald Trump didn't meet it because he engaged in an insurrection, then you can't run for the office. It's fairly simple, and what's remarkable is that this enormously important protection of democracy that protects democracy from would-be dictators who basically turn against the Constitution is also the, among the clearest and simplest provisions in the Constitution. There's no ambiguity about it. Yep. I remember. It doesn't use words like liberty. It doesn't use words like equal protection. It's black and white, very clear. And textualists and people who look at the original meaning of the Constitution should have no difficulty, despite how momentous a decision it is, no difficulty applying it in this case. I, I recall on August 19th, you gentlemen telling me that, that it's not a penalty, it's a disqualification. And I think that's something Im important that people have to ha have to digest. Uh, Judge Ludig, I assume this goes to the Supreme Court, and I assume, but I don't know, that those two questions, the two things that were uh, in dispute in this case, are the things that the Supreme Court will consider. Is Donald Trump, as the Constitution in uh, the 14th Amendment describes uh, describes it, is he an officer of the United States? And, and is it uh, established that he participated in, gave aid and comfort to, or, or, or uh, instigated an insurrection. Is that what the Supreme Court will look at? And how do you, how do you uh, think that's going to go? Uh, essentially, that's correct, Ali. The Supreme Court of the United States, uh, I, I do not believe, will ever hold that the president is not an office, presidency is not an office under the United States and that the president is not an officer of the United States. So I don't have any question in my own mind that the Supreme Court will affirm that aspect of the Colorado Supreme Court's decision if the court eventually does take up the Colorado case. By the same token, the Supreme Court will have to first decide what an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States means for purposes of the disqualification clause of the 14th Amendment. It will then, if it decides, once it decides that definition, it will have to decide whether the former president's conduct uh, before and on and thereafter January 6 uh, constitutes an, an insurrection or rebellion uh, within the, the meaning of the definition that the Supreme Court itself decides. Now, on that point, uh, Allie, uh, it, it's significant that the Supreme Court of, of Colorado uh, examined all, literally all possible definitions of insurrection uh, or rebellion from an originalist uh, a standpoint. And, uh, and, it, and it laid all of that out in great detail in its opinion. And then it concluded correctly, in my opinion, that it need not try to, to fashion a definition uh, under Section 3 of an insurrection or rebellion. Rather, it chose one of those definitions that's supported um, by the by the history of the of the the ratification and framing of Section Three, uh, and said, whatever else the definition includes, it includes this, and that definition was essentially that an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution re requires some uh, act and action of force that 
disrupts or obstructs uh, the, the exercise of an official constitutional duty. Uh, and, and in that case, the Supreme Court, in this case, the Supreme Court of Colorado concluded that 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 force was used to disrupt or obstruct or impede the joint section session of Congress uh, in its constitutional uh, obligation to uh, count the Electoral College votes for the presidency of the United States. So finally, to, to your question, where, where might the court come down if it takes this case? It, it might not take this case. Uh, if, if it didn't, it might well use the reasoning that under the Constitution, the states have the, the, the power and the obligation to uh, determine uh, which candidates are on the state primary ballots. If the Supreme Court were to uh, in, invoke that reasoning, which would be legitimate, Ali, then it could deny certiorari review of the Colorado Supreme Court uh, case. But if, if, it, if it does not, and it certainly need not, then the court, I would expect, will, will grant cert and, 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 uh, and take review of this Colorado Supreme Court case.